Okay, hello everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Lashira Ayala. I'm currently serving as the Deputy Director in the Office of Family Assistance, um, and it's such a pleasure to be with you today. Um, thank you all for your contributions to the posters and your uh, site team conversations. Uh, we want to take the next 20 minutes or so uh, to have everyone share your thoughts, insights, and reflections on what was reinforced or perhaps what you learned from the gallery walk with everyone. Maybe there is a question that uh, you have that's a burden you may wanna ask someone else um, based on what you saw. Um, we wanna have an opportunity for the open discourse. So there are uh, individuals uh, that do have mics and um, please feel free to uh, raise your hand and we'll have a mic brought to you. Yeah, on, on a number of posters, I saw that groups had success in soliciting feedback from families or individuals with lived experience, and I found that really exciting and motivating, and I wondered if some of those groups would be willing to share um, the more specific details of, of how they solicited and obtained that feedback, like what really worked for you. Thank you. So yes, anyone willing to share how you? I think we may have one. Okay, great. Um, well, the something that we do a lot in Iowa, and I don't know if it's just people are, I don't know if they're just open to it or what we don't, we don't bribe them. I promise. We just, we just ask them and they're like very willing to share their feedback. Um, in this process, we use social media to share out, um, links. And then we relied on community partners, who have established relationships with families to say, will you share this survey with them? And that's how we, we got responses. Um, in other situations where we've not through fast LC, but in other projects we've done, we, um, where we've done focus groups or like a little bit more time intensive, um, things we've, we've offered to give them like a gift card or, um, you know, some sort of stipend for their time which has also helped. And I think that's like the proper thing to do. You know, we're doing this for work and getting paid for it. We might as well, you know, do offer something for their time. Do you have anything to add? The staff focus group. Um, they just, we just asked for volunteers and I think um, not, they must not have that opportunity very often because um, they were very eager, like someone's listening to us. Let's, and they were very candid and had really good ideas and seemed excited. So one of the surveys we did following that was to staff to say, what was your experience like participating in this? And was there anything else that you didn't get a chance to share that you want to share now? And they were, they really enjoyed participating in it and, um, said, Things like, you know, after thinking about it, I wish I would have said this. Here's some other ideas that I have. So it was beneficial to give them another follow-up opportunity too. Thank you. Would any others like to share? We have a parent advisory collaborative. So we use um, the parents a lot. <laughs> we do compensate them. We're also, D DCS is the CBCAP lead. So we can use funding from that to reimburse the parents for all of their time. Um, but most, almost everything that we do or that we're involved in, we have parents in the implementation and the planning. So they're, they've told us a long time ago, nothing about us without us. So we make sure to include the parents in everything that we do. Okay, wonderful. Thank you as well. Um, any other insights or questions? thoughts that uh, anyone would like to share with the group. Anyone have any you know, aha moments or something that um, was a bit surprising in a good way? <laughs> uh, from the Chippewa Creek, was it? I thought that was really a, a nice insight because 
uh, it's it's what we really believe in and as part of culture as prevention you know we could use that in those um we can use those in all programs and i like that comment from whoever did that thank you uh for california we noticed uh one particular sticky on there we talked about one of the challenges we identified was the turnover in tribal tanf programs and trying to build that knowledge and expertise and keep that sustained um i think we saw some that i think that stood out to us as a similar challenge that's being shared there and something that could really be dug into i think particularly there was a question on there about what are the causes there so i think that was just a good direction to look in and to think more on Great, thank you. Um, I was gonna offer to share the, um, we used Mural to do our frontline staff sessions um, and Emily and Ella helped us create the board. If you'd like to see the template of that or a list of the survey questions, we also, can't remember that guy's name, but he was from Mathematica, very good at surveys, <laughs> um, helped us with our survey questions like identifying parameters to put around them so we would get better data and um I can share those with you all if you if you're interested. One area one another comment that we had on here was um how do you um in in addressing the uh turnover in staff we've had very little turnover in our staff and we're very lucky, you know. We we address the teamwork all the time, and and I think one of the one of the strong points that we do is um, doing things by consensus. You know, as a supervisor, I I don't make all the decisions. I I rely on the people, the staff, to help me make those decisions, as our as our case managers do. I encourage them to staff cases so they they're not carrying that that load of making that 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 hard decision. And so um, we also um, do strategic planning and we go over and agree on what, what can work for our department, um, our supportive services, our budgets. You know, our, If we have a carryover, we meet on that and, and vote on some projects that we want to work on together. So, and, and I think that's a key is to have a, we have a, a very good work environment. It's, um, it's a safe place. It's a it's a good place. Um, I really discouraging discourage people about um, gossiping because that can be can harmful to people. Confidentiality is, is important because we work with so many sensitive areas. But we're lucky in not having a huge turnover in staff. Okay, wonderful. Any additional thoughts from the group? A couple states put things on about defining prevention um, and intervention. And I'm wondering, we, we did a similar uh, piece of work in Oregon and it with our TANF and our child welfare and then our tribes all together. And it was pretty clear we had different ideas of what prevention was also preservation and intervention. So I was wondering if anybody who had that up there, you know, came up with either a definition that everyone agreed on, or, I mean, we, at the end of the day, kind of, uh, not agreed to disagree, but agreed that there are different there can be different focuses for that work um, and that it's sort of a Venn diagram of sorts where TANF has this work without, that has nothing to do with child welfare and the crossover and then child welfare has work that should not, you know, involve other things. And then the tribal folks in our state really said that pre 
prevention is culture. Prevention is, you know, is preservation basically. Um, and it's really pre preservation of culture um, as kind of the first line. And so it was an interesting, we, we didn't kind of come to any conclude like a formal statement, but I'm wondering if anybody else had different results or actually came up with a definition. I think it was on ours. Um, to to give it a definition, I don't think we did, but I think we had different views on what needed to be worked on and what took priority. Because I think um, with DES, it was really around housing and things like that. And co coming from a DCS standpoint, that wasn't our main focus. So we really used data and we ended up writing a theory of change and going over it with um, Department of Economic Security to show what it looked like and what prevention looked like for D DCS. And then we landed on a project to actually work on. But we really had to talk through what prevention meant for us. And we were like, we don't want any more kids in DCS. So how can we avoid that? And how can you help with your money? And so we really had to just talk through it to find out where that common ground was and how we would work and focus on a project. Just to like quickly add, I think for us, our focus is always on poverty prevention and part of that, and it's linked right into if you're preventing poverty, you're, you're likely also preventing child abuse and neglect. So for us having that much larger scope of prevention and for this project, really being willing to listen to DCS saying, this is what it means to us and this is what we need to focus on here and housing might be something that you guys are interested in looking at as part of that, but really use our data and focus on what we can tell you and, and being willing to be open to changing our really broad perspective to fit what we needed to do here. Thanks, Brian. I just wanted to um, call out with, um, with Michigan, this was a conversation that um, we all had with respect to, it wasn't so much defining prevention, but it was understanding, I think the Child Welfare Information Gateway, some of this literature talks about prevention on a continuum, whether it's primary, secondary, tertiary. Um, and Michigan identified their prevention approach with with FIT as tertiary. So families that are in, um, currently system involved. And so um, if not defining something with very concrete terms, at least understanding your entry point, you know, do you want to do parental campaigns and educate families? Do you wanna find families that are in a certain like risk category? Maybe they're returning from being formally incarcerated or something, or families that are currently in your system, things have already been identified and you're trying to prevent further involvement and so forth. So that could be a helpful framing to sort of thinking as opposed to just defining it, but at which point are we gonna come and focus our resources? Um, I think that was critical with Michigan and just clarifying the scope for the staff that were involved in this work, just to understand like their positioning with prevention work. Um, and then from that, if you go up more, if you go more upstream, great. Um, but at least as a starting point, identifying where on the continuum you would want to focus your attention. I, I was just going to add that uh, from a tribal perspective, it, it means something totally different. Um, and I'll go as far as saying specifically, uh, like language culture is prevention. And then taking a tribe that historically spoke in their language and now doesn't speak their language, they speak a foreign language now. And so preventing that loss of identity going into the system is what they're trying to do at the local level. Um, and like I said, I, I, I'm native, I live in my ancestral homeland and I speak a foreign language that that's gone. I can't go get that back. And so preserving and then meeting them where they are at our goal in the, in the state, we said, let's just meet with the tribes. And so now we took a step back. Let's let the tribes define what they want this to look like and then let them mold it. And it's going to be specifically to what they want and how they want to address prevention uh, going forward. And so I, I think meeting them where they're at, uh, because I, I think a lot of times the systems think that, okay, you're here, you're in the system. Let's look at it from a government perspective, but, tribes look at it from a people perspective. And so it's a little bit different. Okay, thank you. If there's nothing additional from anyone, I think that's a lovely way for us to end this part of the session and thinking of, yes, from a, a people perspective, um, rather than solely a structure 
of uh, governmental um, administration. Thank you all for sharing, for asking the questions, um, being uh, available to share your experiences with each other. Um, so we are now going to move into the portion of today's session where we'll first, I'm going to flip it a little bit, I'm going to briefly uh, review what you have to look forward to, what we have to look forward to for tomorrow, and then we'll have um, some brief closing remarks um, to end our day. Um, so tomorrow, um, as a reminder, um, we will start again at 9 a.m. Um, there will be some reflection, so we'll have some time again to, um, as you go back, and we, I'm sure, all have experienced that a bit. You have your dinner, you're resting, and, and you are even more inspired. So we'll have another opportunity to talk um, again. And then um, we will have uh, a guest speaker, uh, Linda Spears, um, who will have a little bit of time with us, um, and she'll be speaking on sustaining your work uh, to make a difference. Um, there'll be time for sustainability planning within teams. Um, we will be, everyone who's staying will be checking out uh, tomorrow. So there'll be a, a brief um, intermission for that. And um, prior to closing, there'll be some uh, time for cross-site discussion groups. Um, so uh, to move us to closing for the day, I'd like to uh, welcome uh, my colleague from ACF, uh, Deputy Commissioner uh, Sherry Hoffman from the Administration on Children, Youth, and Families to join me um, in sharing some very brief um, closing remarks. Thank you, LaShara. Thanks, everybody. Um, I um, bring you greetings from the Administration for Children, Youth, and Families, which is both the Children's Bureau and the Family and Youth Services Bureau, where this sort of weird additional layer intermediary um, between those two programs and uh, the broader ACF. Um, and the commissioner, Rebecca Jones Gaston, who some of you probably knew from Oregon, but uh, she is traveling today. She's headed out to Oklahoma for a region six tribal consultation. So she could not be with you, but she asked me to extend her deep thanks to all of you for the work that you've been doing over the past 12 months. Um, and it's been really um, interesting. I wish that I um, could have been here a little longer today. I got to walk through the last um, round of posters to see some of the examples of, of work that's been happening and saw a lot of words that um, that make me happy to see things things that you've been working on. First of all, anytime anybody talks about wraparound, for me, uh, that's such a great um, place to start. I started my federal career as an evaluator on a systems of care um, grant for SAMHSA in, in Middle Tennessee, and so learned a lot about wraparound and the processes and the challenges and, and all of those sort of things, um, but also the the benefits of it, right, of, of being person-centered, child-centered, family-centered in the way that we bring services um, to families. I um, saw a lot of um, words about kind of change management processes, which are hard and take a long time and appreciate the um, emphasis around those and, and the, the skills and the strategies that it really takes to do that. Lots of talk about strategic um, planning and strategic thinking, um, all things that too often we don't um, have time to really invest in. And I think that's one of the benefits of the creativity that kind of put this learning collaborative together, that it was uh, done specifically to give uh, folks from different systems time and uh, the ability to come together and, and engage in that kind of strategic thinking and planning across systems. Um, we are trying to model it at the federal level. Um, we know that we expect it and we often uh, demand it of folks that we are funding in the field and that we ourselves don't do a very good job of doing it. Um, our, our collective bosses meet uh, quite a bit. LaShara and I talk quite often. Um, and I think, you know, even just speaking with, with Janelle, who I happened to sit next to at the table today, hearing other ways and other places where Children's Bureau and ACYF could be more plugged in to be bringing the, um, the federal side of some of the, the Children's Bureau and the, the child welfare perspective um, to these conversations. I think there will continue to be opportunities moving forward um, for those kinds of conversations and continued modeling of that kind of collaboration um, that you all have done an incredible job over the last 12 months of doing and would love to even hear more around what the um, successes of that have been, but also where the challenges are so that we can continue to think at our level how we can 
make those challenges um, a little bit easier and where where are the real places um, that there are barriers you're facing that that we can address where have you know a lot of times people will point to legislative barriers or things that are in the laws that are causing trouble but there's a lot of those barriers that uh, we may have made worse unintentionally at our level, whether that's through regulation or not providing guidance on some things that we could provide guidance on. And so the commissioner, Rebecca jones Gaston, is very interested in finding those places and having us do work um, to either correct things that we have said that have made things more difficult or provide resources that can make things easier uh, in terms of, you know, whether that's just guidance or conversations or, um, you know, ways that we can think about future efforts like this on, on this topic or on other topics, that sort of thing. So it's very helpful for us to get connected and plugged in and to, to hear this work. And what you all have done does come back to us. We do think about it. We're not great at uh, feeding back that information and saying, hey, here's a thing we did based on what you learned uh, and or what you taught us. And so we are trying to get a little bit better about that. And I think that's some future conversations that LaShare and I can have about how can we um, actualize these lessons and operationalize them um, in, in our day-to-day -day work. So again, just um, really grateful, wanna um, share with you that gratitude from, from ACYF um, and uh, look forward to thinking about how we can kind of continue the relationship and continue the learning. Yeah, thank you. Thank so you. Thank you all. We'll look forward uh, to meeting everyone back at 9 a.m. Have a great uh, afternoon.